Hi everyone, my name is Indranil Banerjee and I am a Senior Solutions Architect at AWS and I help customers in the semiconductor sector solve their business challenges using the AWS cloud. In this session, I'll talk to you about fine-grained access control in the Amazon OpenSearch service. Security of the Amazon OpenSearch service follows the shared responsibility model like any managed database or data store on AWS. AWS is responsible for the security of the underlying infrastructure on which the Amazon OpenSearch service clusters run and the physical security of the data storage layer. The customer has responsibility for controlling access to the Amazon OpenSearch service clusters and protecting any data in transit and at rest. Controlling access to Amazon Open Search service can be thought of at three levels. Let us take a quick look at each of the three levels. Then we will dive deep into fine-grained access control, which is the primary topic of discussion in this video. Amazon Open Search service clusters can be made publicly accessible, which means they can be accessed from anywhere on the internet over a public endpoint, or they can be made accessible only from within a VPC or an on-prem data center that has either a VPN connectivity or a direct connect connectivity to the VPC. The network level security configuration controls access to the Amazon OpenSearch service endpoint. You can also use security groups and network ACLs to further control access to the Amazon OpenSearch service endpoint. Identity and access management in Amazon OpenSearch service controls access to an Amazon OpenSearch service domain using one or a combination of three types of policies. Number one, resource-based policies or domain access policies. These are attached to a particular domain within Amazon OpenSearch service and control what actions a user or role can perform on a particular domain or its sub-resources within the Amazon OpenSearch service domain. Number two, identity-based policies. These policies are attached to a particular user or role as opposed to domain access policies that are attached to an Amazon OpenSearch service domain. Identity-based policies control what Amazon OpenSearch service resources the user or role can access and what actions they can take on those resources. Number three, IP-based policies. These policies are a special type of resource-based policies that use a condition in the policy to control which IP CIDR ranges are allowed to access a particular Amazon open source service domain or its sub-resources. Fine-grained access control in Amazon Open Search Service offers additional mechanisms for controlling access to your Amazon Open Search Service domains. Fine-grained access control allows controlling the Amazon Open Search Service indices that are searched for a particular query, the documents that are returned as a response to a query, and even what fields within a document are returned, depending on what permissions a particular user has. This granular level level of control is not possible with the other access control mechanisms described above. Today we are going to dive a bit deeper into how fine-grained access control works in Amazon OpenSearch service. We will discuss some useful concepts to be aware of and then I'll get into a demo of how to configure fine-grained access control in the Amazon OpenSearch service. Fine-grained access control offers the following benefits. Number one, role-based access control. Number two, security at the index document and field levels. Number three, multi-tenancy of the Amazon OpenSearch service dashboards. And number four, HTTP basic authentication for Amazon OpenSearch service and Amazon OpenSearch service dashboards. It is useful to understand the following concepts that are at the core of fine-grained access control in the Amazon OpenSearch service. We'll discuss users, roles, permissions. We'll look into what are action groups, backend roles and role mappings. First, let us begin by understanding what is the master user in an Amazon Open Search service. A master user can be either a username password combination or it can be an IAM principle such as an IAM user or role. The master user has full permissions to the Amazon Open Search service domain. That includes the ability to create internal users, roles, and role mappings within the Amazon Open Search service domain. There are two ways you can define a master user 
user in the Amazon Open Search service. Number one, the master user can be an IAM principal. If you choose an IAM principal for your master user, all requests to the cluster must be signed using AWS Signature version 4. Amazon Open Search service doesn't take any of the IAM principals permissions into consideration. The IAM user or role serves purely for authentication. The policies on that user or role have no bearing on the authorization of the master user. Authorization is handled through the various permissions in the Amazon Open Search Service security plugin. We recommend using IAM users or roles if you want to use the same users on multiple domains or if you want to use Amazon Cognito to access dashboards or if you have Amazon Open Search Service clients that support Signature v4 signing. A master in the internal user database, that's the second way. If you create a master in the internal user database with a username and password combination, you can use HTTP basic authentication as well as IAM credentials to make requests to the cluster. The internal user database is stored in an Amazon Open Search Service index, so you can't share it with other domains. We recommend the internal user database if you don't need to reuse across multiple domains or if you want to use HTTP basic authentication to access dashboards rather than Amazon Cognito or if you have clients that only support basic authentication. Next, let's understand the concepts of users, roles and mappings. A user is either a person or an application that makes requests to an Amazon Open Search Service domain. A user is authenticated either using IAM access keys or a username and password combination. They can specify the IAM access keys or username password at the time of making the requests to Amazon Open Search Service. Next, roles. A role in Amazon Open Search Service is a combination of permissions at the cluster-wide index, document, and field levels. It is a fundamental unit needed to implement fine-grained access control in Amazon Open Search Service and is different from an IAM role. The next concept is that of mapping. A mapping links a role to one or more users. A user can also have multiple role mappings. The permissions a particular user has are determined by the roles that are associated with that user. Unless you map roles to users, every request to the cluster ends in a permission error. You can map roles to users using using Amazon Open Search Service dashboards or the underscore plugins slash underscore security operation in the REST API in the Amazon Open Search Service. If your domain uses identity-based access policies, Amazon Open Search Service automatically maps your users to a new role called default underscore role in order to help you properly migrate existing users. This temporary mapping ensures that your users can still successfully send IAM signed GET and PUT requests until you create your own role mappings. We recommend strongly deleting the default role as soon as you set up your own role and map them accordingly. Now let's understand the concept of permissions. With fine-grained access control, there are different types of permissions that you can set up. First, you have cluster level permissions, which include the ability to make broad requests such as underscore mget, underscore msearch, and underscore bulk, monitor the health, take snapshots, and more. Manage these permissions using the cluster permission section when creating a role. Next, you have index level permissions, which include the ability to create new indices, search indices, read and write documents, delete documents, manage aliases, and more. Manage these permissions using the index permission section when creating a role. The third are document level permissions. Document le level security lets you restrict which documents in an index a user can see. When creating a role, specify an index pattern and an open search query. Any users that you map to that role can see only the documents that match that query. Number four are field level permissions. Field level security lets you control which document fields a user can see. When creating a role, add a list of fields to either include or exclude. And number five, we have field masking. Field masking is an alternative to field level security that lets you anonymize the data in a particular field rather than remove it altogether. Backend roles 
can help simplify the role mapping process. Rather than mapping the same role to 100 individual users, you can map the role to a single backend role that all 100 users share. Backend roles can be IAM roles or arbitrary strings. Next, action groups are sets of permissions that you can reuse across different resources. Next, we'll discuss the steps to implementing fine-grained access control. The first is you have to enable fine-grained access control in the Amazon OpenSearch service domain. This can be enabled using the console, using the AWS command line interface or using configuration APIs. Now, once you have enabled fine-grained access control, the next step is to access the OpenSearch service dashboard as a master user. You sign in using the master username and password if you are using an internal user database. Once you have signed in, you can create users directly in the Amazon OpenSearch service dashboards or you can use the REST API. Once you have created your users, the next step is to create the roles. You can create the roles just like you created the users directly in the Amazon OpenSearch service dashboard or using the REST API. Once you have created the roles, you need to assign permissions to those roles. So you assign the permissions at the five different levels that we had discussed earlier. Once you have created the users, the roles and assigned the permissions to the roles, the next step is mapping the roles to the users. This can also be done directly in the OpenSearch dashboards or using the REST API. You can also create backend roles to simplify the role mapping. You also can optionally use action groups. Now I'll show you a demo of how fine-grained access control can be configured. The first step is to enable fine-grained access control. You can do that by going to the AWS console and select the particular domain for which you want to enable fine-grained access control. And as you can see, there are multiple tabs for configuration. So you need to go into the security configuration tab and then here as you can see fine-grained access control has been enabled for this particular domain and the other conditions that are required for fine-grained access control to work are the following three you need HTTPS, you need node-to-node -node encryption, and you need encryption at rest. All three of these are enabled. The first thing I'll show you is I'll execute a particular query, and I'm currently logged in as the admin user that has all the permissions. I see that it has returned 7,400 matching documents. And if we look at all the documents, for every document, we see a whole bunch of fields such as host, auth, timestamp, etc., etc. And we see that for the geo, the source, there are a lot of different countries from which this information is coming. For example, GR, NR. As a next step, we'll configure fine-grained access control. You can scroll down all the way. You see the management. Under management, there is security so click on security and this is where we can create internal users roles sign permissions to the roles and then we can also associate a particular user to a particular role i already have created a user and a role but i'll just show you how you can do that so you can click on create internal user and then you can give a particular username you hit on create and the user will get created. So in my case, I have already created a user called restricted user. Next, we go to the role and here we can create a new role. And in my case, I have already created a role called restricted role and search for restricted role. And here it is. So let's look at what permissions the restricted role has. So currently we see that this particular role doesn't have any cluster level permissions. And then index permissions. So we see that this particular role only has permis index permissions for this particular index, web-log. It doesn't have any permissions to access other indices inside this particular cluster. In order to see all the permissions that have been assigned to this particular role, the restricted-role, we can click on edit role and that takes us to this particular screen where it shows all the permissions shows the cluster level permissions the index permissions the next is document level permissions so you can control within a particular index which particular documents this role can access by specifying a query. Only the documents that match that particular query that you have specified will be visible for that particular role. So in this case, what we are doing is we are restricting access for this particular role to only those documents where the field geo.source is US. And then another thing we are doing is we are including only certain fields. Unlike the admin user who is able to see all the fields in every document, 
assignment the user that is going to be assigned to this particular role will be able to see only the fields that I've specified over here in the include condition and they are geo.source URL status and client IP you could also specify an exclude condition and specify only fields which are to be excluded in that case it will work the opposite way and another thing that we are going to show is that we are going to an anonymize the client IP field which means you won't see the correct value of the client IP field but you will see something else because we want to hide the actual value of that field from the user. Now that we have seen the permissions that have been associated with the restricted role, the next step is to see how we can associate users with roles. So while we are on this restricted role screen, you see there are two tabs here, permissions and mapped users. So if we click on the mapped users, this is where we can assign users to this particular role. So as you can see, I have already assigned the restricted user to the restricted role. So all permissions that I have assigned to the restricted role are the ones that will apply when I log in to the Amazon Open Search Service dashboard as restricted dash user. So in the next step, that is what we'll do. We'll log in as restricted user and then we'll execute the same query and we'll see the differences in the results. So now what I've done is I have logged in as the restricted user which we had created in the previous step. You can confirm that by clicking on the right. So I'm going to run the same query for which earlier we had received 7500 hits. Let's see how many we receive with this particular user. We see the number of hits is only 28 which is much less and we see that all the geo sources are only US. We don't see any other country. So that was the restricting condition for that particular user. And the other thing to notice is that we don't see all the fields now that the admin user was seeing. We only see the few fields that we had enabled when we configured the fine-grained access control. So we see client IP, we see URL, and we see status. And the third thing to notice is that in this client IP field, you don't see actual IP addresses, which is because we had anonymized this particular field. So that's the reason you don't see the correct value. So those are essentially the kinds of permissions that you can set. Finally, we see the response to the same query for a user with no permissions. In this case, we see an exception because this particular user has no permissions. So that brings us to the end of how to configure fine-grained access control in the Amazon Open Search service. In this video, we discussed fine-grained access control in the Amazon Open Search service. I explained how fine-grained access control provides you the ability to assign permissions to users at the cluster, index, document, and field levels. I also demonstrated how to configure fine-grained access control in the Amazon Open Search service dashboard. Thank you for watching this video.